So in the last couple of episodes, you'll have seen us building up our rear trailing arm links and our rear cross member here. We then spent quite a bit of time looking at our upper links, which are proving to be a lot harder than even we anticipated, and we sort of knew they were going to be hard to do. Yeah, the upper links live in like a really heavily congested, dense little area of the bay here. We, you know, we've got the drive shafts and everything else in the way, so we've decided instead we're going to move ahead from that slightly, and we're going to build our lower radius arms instead. So a few factors combine here to give us a really hard time. The main one is just congestion. It's a busy area, which we've got our drive shaft in the way here, we've got our coil spring mount here, and we've got the chassis leg all kind of in this area. So when we're building our upper control arm, we kind of have to figure out how it will mesh with other components through compression, so as the suspension raises and lowers, um, without actually knowing how it really wants to fit. So for all we know, the correct placement for the hub could be any of these different track positions, it could be any amount of camber, there's so many different ways this whole system could fit together. So we've just got too many constraints here to be able to really reason about how to design this upper radius arm. We just don't know how the system's going to move, so we don't know how to bend it to clear the drive shaft and things like that. So we've decided instead we're going to go for something that's a lot less constrained and we're going to do our lower arms first. The area that these, that these are going to hook up to is a lot clearer, there's not really a whole lot of anything in the way, and just as it happens, the simulations that we were doing on racing aspirations uh, suspension geometry calculator suggested that a good length for the lower radius arm to be somewhere around 300 mil, give or take. We can go, you know, a little bit shorter, a little bit longer as necessary, but that's kind of a good ballpark. Conveniently, 300 mil in from our lower mount here gives us loads and loads of room. We're miles clear of anything on both sides. We're nowhere near the sump. We're nowhere near the gearbox and differential. There's just tons of space to work in. So with that in mind, we need to cut this down so that it will be centre to centre, 30 centimetres. So now we've got this chopped down, we can take this bit out, as if by magic, and shorten the two ends together. Now we're going to chamfer these down and we can weld them back in, and then we have our much shorter 300mm control arm. So we've tacked up our lower arm, and we're going to test fit it. So we've made these ones 300mm long, which we think is going to be about right, and give us a good ratio to what we inevitably end up with up here which is something we tested on Racing Aspirations, which we'll go into on another video. So we've got the test piece just to hold it in place here so we can see roughly what angles this is going to end up at. Now with this at this angle, with the outside slightly lower than the inside, under compression, the bottom of the wheel is going to be pushed out and we're going to pick up a bit more negative camber, which we want some of. We want to work out the exact amount we get later, but we'll be working that out once we actually have mounts and everything else and we can work around fixed points. Right now, we're just trying to get something that fits and works and is approximately right. These arms are going to be replaced at some point anyway with something far more adjustable because we'll need them. So now we need to make a bracket on the chassis for this to fit into. So we've measured this up, it's 55mm wide, and we've made a nice little cardboard template that wraps around it and will sit with the right angle. Unfortunately, what we didn't take into account was the width across here would change when we parallelogram it to get it into the right place. So we've cut it in half. Now we've done some maths. The shape's fairly easy to work out. We can just use a bit of Pythagoras and work out the length that we need. It's about 57 and a half millimetres, which is close enough for what we need. So we just need to tape this back together now, a little bit longer than it was, and then we can check it, make sure it looks fine, and then make it in metal. So we've built our radius arm mounting brackets, you'll notice it's now dark, it took us a lot longer than we were expecting, but we can now in fact get these onto our shortened lower radius arms here. Because we now need to actually attach these brackets to the chassis in some way, rather than just have them flopping around on our lower arms, we actually need to know where on the chassis they need to attach. To know that, we have to have the hub in the right place, and to have the hub in the right place we need to compare it against the rest of our body. So we've clamped a nice big piece of stock down the side of the bodywork here, and it's attached to our brake disc. So what, what, what this is doing is displaying how much toe-in or toe-out we have. We've got a couple of marks up front that we take some measurements from, and we use a little bit of trigonometry to work out our toe angle. Currently, it's about a degree and a half inwards, which is really, really good. Um, the internet suggests, and it's not like a hard and fast rule, but broadly speaking, a little bit of rear toe-in actually helps with stability. It helps prevent understeer, sorry, helps prevent oversteer even. 
which is good for us because with this engine in the back and with all of our power in the rear wheels, we're expecting this to be really, really tail happy. So if we can dial a little bit of that out with some of our suspension, all the better. So with our toe angle set, because that sets how far out the hub is, since it rotates around our trailing arm link here, with our toe set, our hub is now at the right uh, you know, width in and out of the vehicle, it's at the correct track, which means that all of the other moving parts that hang off it inwards are now in their right places as well. Crucially, this bracket. So what we can now do is we can build up a little frame off of our, off of our chassis to fit onto the bracket, and then everything will be in the right place. We just do the same on the other side then, and we are golden. We're back, and now we're building up a jig to sort out the frame for our mounting brackets. What we've got here is just a couple of little spare offcuts of our 60 by 30 box, the same material that we've used for our cross brace. We've just kind of clamped on a little bit of it underneath and then over. So this piece here pretty much represents where the arm will actually fit. So we've got our suspension arm lined up here, it actually moves around in 3D space. We can put it where we want it, but we're going to have it nicely lined up into the side of our rear end. So we're just going to cut off a nice piece of box here to fill this corner, weld this all up, and uh, just do the same the other side. So we've got one of our stays here, we've tack welded our bracket onto the bottom of it, we're pretty sure we know where it goes, but before we commit fully, we're going to check a few other things. It shouldn't change, but we've been wrong before. Once this fits in under here, this will be set up to take the lateral loads coming out of the radius arms. The trailing arm takes fore and aft, the suspension will take up and down, but the radius arms are going to put load on this way and this way. We don't want this to move or to flex, which if we have this stuck out on a single weld here, it's going to do. It, it will. So, we're going to make a couple of braces. One fits in approximately here and joins on here, missing the dif differential. And another one coming across the top, joining into the bottom of the chassis leg, creating two nice big triangles. Probably also going to join this forward into the back of the chassis as well, just to create an extra point of contact, and we'll probably need to put something else down there anyway. But we'll get them set up, and then we can start welding all of this and everything else into here. And we've actually made progress. Yay! So we've tacked our first stay in, um, and we've also tacked in one of these, which is our back brace to stop it moving left and right. We're actually going to leave the vertical ones for the time being because they're going to be a lot easier to fit once the engine is back out when we come around to seam welding around all of these to make sure that they're in properly. So this is as far as we're going to go for the time being um, and we're going to fit up the other side and fit this one. So you'd think with these arms and braces and spars all welded in as best we can, at least with the engine in the way, we're now going to work on the upper radius arms. But you'd be wrong, mostly because we haven't got parts to do it. What we're going to do instead is work on the anti-roll bar, because that means we can close off the back of this part of the chassis as well, and generally finish off this rear bar. So with this bolted in approximately on both sides where it would normally be, we can lift this up and start looking at where it will fit onto the back of the frame. Now, Full disclosure, we did sort of plan this beforehand and we just kind of ignored it. But if we put a plate cum bracket across the back of here, we can bolt these two original mountings directly onto the back of this. The anti-roll bar actuates as normal, everything is bond. So we've done a quick design for the bracket. Uh, we're going to have a couple of tabs at the top which fold around the existing cross member. That way it'll give it a little bit more rigidity fore and aft. It might look like a lot of gibberish lines, but some of them have been left over from other templates. But we're going to chop this out, offer it up, and then see where we get to. So, with the template made, we can offer it up. As you can see, this fits in pretty well where we want it to go. And then this piece hooks around and goes up underneath there. So from our template, we've now made two brackets. They're a little bit bigger than they were before, but we had to make them slightly larger for the size of the brackets on the arm. Now we're just going to skim down them so that we can bend them a little bit more precisely, bend them up, and fit them. So, the bends are made. We can put this on, see how it fits. It looks pretty good, it lines up reasonably well. 
We just need to cut down all of these brackets so they're a little bit less square because it doesn't really help us. Uh, and then a couple of bits of finishing off and we can weld it in. Been a fairly productive couple of days here. We've got the anti-roll bar fitted onto the brackets that we've just welded on today. We've got our lower radius arms fitted on there with their big braces on the back here. And it's not fully welded together yet. So while we wait for the parts to arrive to build our upper radius arms that we're gonna put on here, we're gonna pull the engine, flip the chassis over, weld the rest of it up, clean it all up nice and pretty, so that when we've done all that, we can flip it back and do our upper control arms. 